The Leadership Institute in Washington, D.C. provided a way for Cohort 11 from University of Mary Hardin Baylor to better understand our nation's history, culture, traditions, economic system, and the political system of our nation. This experience enhanced our knowledge of governmental leadership through the organizations visited and speakers that provided lectures and presentations. Our first stop took place at National Defense University, where we visited the Dwight Eisenhower School for National Security and Research Strategy at the National War College. Dr. Bill Mayo, Professor of Behavioral Science, shared with us the mission of the National War College. To educate future leaders of the Armed Forces, Department of State, and other civilian agencies for high-level policy, command, and staff responsibilities by conducting a senior-level course of study in national security strategy. The War College focuses on national security and research strategy. It is one of two war colleges. Students enrolled have been identified by their service or agency as a senior leader and will potentially move into senior leadership position. The Eisenhower School Values Proposition it offers one-of-a-kind joint education and defense strategy, not just for military members, but government members too, diplomats and business. A memorable quote from this visit by retired General Dave O. Leadership is the key to everything we do, whether in government, defense, education, business, or religion. Moreover, Colin Powell's words resonated loudly within me. I came here to study war, and while I learned about war, I learned even more about the importance of peace, General Colin Powell. Our second appointment took place at the Archer Center, where we met with a group of master's and doctoral students to have a tabletop discussion where each UMHB student was paired with two Archer fellows at a table. Our task was to engage in conversation and review an abstract for each of the Archer Fellows policy projects. One of the students at my table from UT Arlington was writing on the topic of illegal immigration. She focused on whether or not illegal immigration benefited or hurt the U.S. economy. We had a lengthy and productive conversation about the political challenges surrounding this topic. The Archer Center Graduates Program in Public Policy was established in 2010 by the University of Texas system as a way to bring graduate and medical students interested in policy and politics to our nation's capital to learn about the federal government and public service. Graduate fellows live, learn, and work in the heart of Washington, D.C. during the summer. Selection is based on a competitive process and it is offered to highly motivated graduate and medical students of the University of Texas system. An intriguing visit in our schedule took place at the Church of Scientology, where we met a religious panel to discuss religious liberty. Scientologist Reverend Susan Taylor talked about their focus to practice tolerance and understanding different points of views and belief systems. Religious Freedom Roundtable focuses on international issues. It's not the religion that creates violent people, she said. It's people wearing a violent hat. She also mentioned... After 9-11, religious freedom committees were viewed as terrorist groups. Sam Brownback, ambassador for religious freedom, encourages open table meetings, which gained him bipartisan support in this new role and an opportunity to promote the importance of religious freedom on both sides of the aisle. We also heard from Ilan Kagari, practicing Muslim and senior program director for religious liberty. She shared her faith story on how being a Muslim has resulted in different reactions, some negative. Growing up, she tried different religions from middle school to high school and decided on Islam. A memorable quote she offered central to the Islam religion was, Wisdom is gained from learning from each other's differences. The road is different, but our return is the same. Next, we visited the National Center for Education Statistics. The NCES is the primary federal entity for collecting and analyzing data related to education in the U.S., in other nations. The NCES is located within the U.S. Department of Education and the Institute of Education Sciences. NCES fulfills a congressional mandate to collect, collate, 
analyze and report complete statistics on the condition of American education, conduct and publish reports, and review and report on education activities internationally. Jill McCarroll, Associate Project Officer of Early Childhood Longitudinal Studies, shared four great sources of an overview of NCES, the Distance Learning Dataset, which focuses on computer-based modules, EDDI, describes data collection, NCES Handbook of Survey Methods, describes how information is obtained, and Condition of Education, data reported to Congress. We also heard from Dr. Grady Wilburn, who presented on the NAEP. The National Assessment of Education Progress is the largest nationally representative and continuing assessment of what America's students know and can do in various subject areas. The trip also provided opportunities to visit historical sites with rich history and significance, such as the U.S. Capitol, where we had the opportunity to meet and greet Senator John Corning, the Lincoln and MLK Memorial, the Washington Monument, the National Cemetery, and the White House. The conclusion of the trip ended with a delicious and elegant dinner at the Hamilton. The Leadership Institute in Washington, D.C. allowed us to make key connections that could result in future opportunities, but also it allowed the cohort to bond and create memories as friends and colleagues. Among other organizations visited was the American Association of Community Colleges, American Association of State Colleges and Universities, the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty, the Heritage Foundation, and the U.S. Department of Education, where we met Dr. Lisa Ramirez, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy and Programs in the Office of Elementary and Secondary Education. Dr. Ramirez shared her inspiring story of dropping out of high school, but persevering to go through school while making education accessible to others. In retrospect, this is the reason why I am pursuing a doctoral degree, to give back to the most vulnerable and open doors for those that need it the most, particularly the doors of an education.